body positions affecting the disc pressure. Body positions can affect the spine. Here is a diagram showing the intradiscal pressure related to the activity and the position of a person. Postural changes have varying effects on lumbar disc pressure at various positions. The lowest disc pressure is measured while lying in the supine position. Disc pressure measured at 75 when lying on the side. The disc pressure is 100 while standing. 150 kg of disc pressure while standing and leaning forward. And 220 kg of disc pressure when holding a load and leaning forward. 140 kg of disc pressure while sitting. 185 kg of disc pressure while sitting and leaning forward. The highest disc pressure is measured while sitting and 20 degrees forward leaning with 20 kg in the arms. Intradiscal pressure associated with the seated position and postural changes is greater in comparison to the same position performed while standing. By keeping the weight of the load close to the body, this reduces the compressive forces being placed on the lumbar spine. Yoga activities and exercises performed during sitting probably have less pressure being placed on the discs. This body positions can affect the disc pressure and can cause low back pain. There are other common physical factors that can lead to low back pain, such as lack of fitness, Heavy lifting of objects, holding the loads close to the body is important to reduce the compressive forces being placed on the lumbar spine. Operating motor vehicles, prolonged setting, operating vibrating tools, Job dissatisfaction or lacking of interest in the profession may lead to psychological factors that can cause low back pain. Cigarette smoking, nicotine causes disc degeneration. Here is a summary of the most common physical factors that lead to low back pain. What are the provocative maneuvers that can recreate the symptoms of the patient and simulate the clinical presentation of the patient? One of the most important tests is straight leg raising test. Elevation of a painful limb causes sciatica and radicular pain. The test is positive when the pain occurs with less than 60 degrees of hip flexion. The test can be modified by bending the knee. When the knee is bent, the pain gets better due to relaxing of the sciatic nerve. Once the patient feels the pain, lower the leg slightly and dorsiflex the foot. Dorsiflexion of the foot also reproduces sciatic pain in this position. How about range of motion? Can range of motion become a provocative maneuver that simulates the pain from a specific problem or disease? Yes, for example, range of motion tests involving flexion of the spine will also produce pain in patients who have disc-related disorders. Patients with spinal stenosis or spondylolithiasis will also demonstrate pain during extension of the lower back.
Because of the pain suffered during extension of the spine, people suffering from spinal stenosis get relief from leaning forward. Extension decreases the foramenal area and pinches the nerve. Flexion increases the foramenal area and relaxes the nerve and relieves the nerve from pressure. There is a provocative test for the sacroiliac joint and that test determines the presence of a side joint problem or not and it's called Faber test. The purpose of this test is to stretch the SI joint in order to reproduce pain. Diagnostic injection of the SI joint is probably better than the clinical diagnosis and other clinical tests in confirming the diagnosis of SI joint problems. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.